Mercury in Aquarius is a very interesting placement. It's much different than Mercury in Capricorn, owing to the fact that although both of the signs, Capricorn and Aquarius, belong to Saturn, Aquarius is an airy sign and Mercury really fares well in air signs. So let's do our usual dissection. Let's do our usual breakdown of the symbolism and point out the key resonances between the planet and the sign. To start out with, the underlying similarity between Mercury and Aquarius is that Mercury is intelligence and Aquarius has a lot of curiosity. So, from this harmonious resonance, you expect good things, as always, with harmonious resonances. So what kind of good thing? Good stuff with curiosity, good stuff with the intellect. So you find that Mercury Aquarius natives have curiosity. Their curiosity is intelligent and it's active, kind of vibrant curiosity. So they like to try things. They experiment with things. They kind of look to new things. So you could also describe them as being progressive or open to new ideas and sort of inventive. The next resonance between Mercury and Aquarius is the fact that Mercury is the planet for relationships, not specifically romantic relationships, but all relationships in general, relating with and interacting with people. And Aquarius has something about it which is very conducive to relationships. It's the antithesis of Leo. Leo is uh, centralized ego, and Aquarius is decentralized ego. So Aquarius has as its fundamental quality a groupness to it, a sort of group identity, which is very, very congenial to and on the same page of the whole concept of making relationships. So with Mercury in Aquarius, the native tends to be you could say good with relationships, but let me specifically explain why. They tend to be empathic. In other words, empathetic. And they care about other people, or they feel for other people, or they easily put themselves in other people's shoes. So they have a sort of concern for others that makes relationships tend to go well. And the very interesting thing is that when you're concerned about other people, and when you like other people, the world tends to respond in kind. People tend to take kindly to that, and they tend to like you as well. So a Mercury and Aquarius native, not only are they able to like a wide variety of people, because also the nature of Aquarius is eclectic. It's curious and eclectic and open to new ideas. So this relationship um, resonance spills over with that theme as well the Aquarian Mercury native has a capacity to like many different types of people and to be liked by many different types of people. So there is some potential here for a fame, like a grassrootsy fame. Another resonance between Mercury and Aquarius is that Mercury is the planet for dexterity, things like balance, symmetry, so it's very refined and talented planet. And Aquarius is an air sign. So it's naturally going to have to do with talents. Because it's Saturn's air sign, it has to do with the more practical type of talents or down-to-earthiness in your talents or some grit in your talent. But when you have the planet of dexterity and talent in a sign that has a lot of of, of a particular type of talent and dexterity to it, then you get a good thing. What to expect as an interpretation for Mercury in Aquarius? These people, these natives, will be talented in a kind of Saturn-y way, which means like in a kind of down-to-earth way or a gritty way or a real way. And this also kind of spills over with the relationship synergy to mean that can be talented in a way that a lot of people like. You can have a lot of mass appeal from your talents. 
One thing that I want to mention and noticed in researching Mercury in Aquarius is don't forget that the nakshatras also coincide with um, Rashi's or zodiac signs. So in Aquarius, you do have the nakshatra Shravana. Tropical um, Aquarius has the nakshatra Shravana in it. And Mercury and Shravana is really great because Shravana is about communicating, talking, listening, and Mercury is that type of planet. So you find a lot of people that get the talent part out of Mercury in Aquarius, have it in the sort of middle of Aquarius where Shravana is, and they have talent for music particularly because Shravana has to do with sound. A final resonance I would like to mention is not exactly a harmonious resonance, nor is it exactly a dissonant resonance. It's kind of a borderline dissonant resonance. It's the fact that Mercury is a mercantile planet. It likes to trade. It likes to buy and sell. It likes money. But Aquarius isn't. Aquarius is this humble, service-oriented, volunteer work you kind of assign. So this is a bit of a clash where you have the planet that's good at making money, but it's in a sign that doesn't really ever think about making money. It thinks about volunteering. So what I'll suggest as basic interpretation to use as your baseline for Mercury and Aquarius in this respect is this native isn't motivated by making money. They're not profit-driven. doesn't mean they might not make money because after all, they're talented and likable. But the, the making of money is not what actually is their actual motivator. So then what is their motivator? Some other kind of art, idealistic thing, maybe an artistic ideal, maybe a moral ideal, whatever. But it's not money directly driven, driving them. It's more about working as an ideal or working for an ideal or working because they love it or something like that. Now what we do in these videos with the planets and the signs is I show you a consistent technique and that you can use for any planet and any sign. And the technique is very simple. You look for where the planet symbolizes something that's very, very similar to what the sign symbolizes. And once you find that, you assess whether or not the planet and the sign are harmonious about that thing or whether they're antithetical about that thing. The dissonant resonance reveals what's complex or difficult for the native. The harmonious resonance, on the other hand, indicates what's easy, what comes natural, what's an inherent strength for the native. What I'm teaching you really is the method of how to do astrological interpretation by going down into the engine of the symbolism and comparing the parts. The actual interpretation that you should give is going to be individualized per the individual chart. So if you have person A with the moon in Scorpio and person B with the moon in Scorpio, it's not going to be exactly the same interpretation. Because person B's moon might have an aspect from something and person A moon doesn't, etc., 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 etc. But what I'm showing you in the videos is the backbone of what a planet and a sign symbolizes. And if, once you understand that backbone, you modify it based on the circumstances, the extraneous circumstances that are affecting it in an individual chart. So I hope you really like this system, not just this one video, but all the videos that we do on the planets and the signs. We'll do them all. And I hope you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of those. And I hope to see you around soon. Thank you.